Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish over the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth Matthew chapter 28 Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 and Jesus said unto them go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost these two verses of the scripture are general verses with instruction from the Father general verses with instruction from the Father and it is commanded or demanded of us to be fruitful and every one of us will be because it is the will of God but the general without the specific will not make you a world changer the general without the specific will not make you a world changer there is a higher calling there is a demand upon your life for you not just to settle for the general but to insist on the specific nature specific purpose specific calling of your life to ask God the role you are born to make the difference you are born to make you are born to be a world changer you are born to be a difference maker do not settle for the general the general is for everybody but there is role for those who are the called there is a role for those who are peculiar there is the role for those who are of the holy nation there is the role for those who are the called of God. So this morning, as the Lord gave the grace, or by talking on the topic, going from the general to the specific. Going from the general to the specific. And the theme the Lord has given us this month is God's special purpose vessel. God SPV, God's special purpose vessel. Let us pray. Immortal Redeemer, we honor you. Ancient of days, the creator of the universe, the lion of the tribe of Jesus' house, Saskatoon. We worship you, we adore you, Lord. We thank you for your presence in our life. There is nothing that is more important to us that your presence and there is nothing that is more glorifying than for us to sing of your praise in the land of the living because you are the one that has brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light so dear dad we pray that you release your unction and your spirit upon us that you make you take us from the level of the general to the level of the purposeful so that our life can indeed sing of your praise in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. quickly go with me to the book of 1st uh, Peter 
chapter 2 and in verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 and in verse 9. And this is a particular scripture that most of us probably know by earth. That most of us sing as a song. It said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. N notice this. Everybody is called. Everybody is created. Everybody had the demand of God upon their life to go and multiply. But not everybody is chosen. It is not everybody that is a royal priesthood. It is not everybody that is a holy nation. It is not everybody that is peculiar. The advent of peculiarity, the advent of those who are chosen, is only a mandate for those who are world changers. Those who will be born and will refuse to die until there is a footprint of this on the sand of time. Those who are not going to be mundane, those who are not going to be ordinary, those who are called, those who are special, those who will live and will die and generations unborn will keep singing of, their, of what the impact they made in their time. Those are the true chosen. Those are the peculiar. Those are of the chosen generation. Are you chosen? Are you peculiar? When in another hundred years or 150 years, all of us here, when we are gone, what will be written about you? What will be said about you? That will determine whether you are peculiar. That will determine whether you are chosen. That will determine whether you are not just a mere man that came like, uh, what is his name? The man that lived 969 years on earth. Methuselah. And nothing other than the age was written about him. What were they written about you? Many today are stalked in the general. Not discerning that they are designed to change their world. Many today are running on a treadmill. And by the time they are no more, nobody even recognizes them. Nobody knows the role they have played. Their life has been wasted. Yes, they came to church. Yes, they were workers. Yes, they were pastors. But just a year or two years, or 10 years after they are gone, nothing could be reminded of them. Nothing. It is because they've sang the song, I am a chosen generation. It is because they've sang the song, I am a royal priesthood. But indeed are they chosen. Indeed are they royal. You can make up your mind where you want to be. Finding, knowing, and understanding and working in the specific purpose of your bath will make you a world changer. A lot of people are just living. They saw that people are going to school. They went to school. They saw that people are taking a course. They took the course. They saw that people are getting married. They got married. They saw that people are giving birth. They gave birth. They saw, they saw, they did. But they never find out what is God's purpose for their life. They saw that people are going to church and they follow them to church. They never ask God, why, Lord, me? The Bible says concerning Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 5, chapter 1, from verse 5 to 7. Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 5 to 7. It said, before I found thee in the belly of your mother, I knew thee. And before thou comest out from the womb, I sanctify thee. There is a purpose for every creation. 
there is a purpose for everyone that is created. And only those who work in purpose are the chosen. Only those who work in purpose are peculiar. Even twins born of the same father have separate DNA. Their DNA are not perfectly matched. So, every man created of God, thank you for working in the general. Be fruitful and multiply. But what is the reason for your creation? Why are you here? Why? Can you ask your neighbor? Can you ask the person seated beside you? Why are you here? Are you working in purpose? What is the sign of your peculiarity? How can I say that you are chosen? Are you just filling in the space? Are you just a number? Are you just filling in the space? Are you just a number? Let's quickly look at some people who are peculiar. John the Baptist was peculiar. Luke chapter, chapter 1 from verse 5. His peculiarity was defined. He was supposed to be the foreigner of Jesus. And the moment he fulfilled his mandate, John said, for me to decrease and for him to increase. And he was happy fulfilling his mandate even when his head was being taken off. It is not the number of years you spend in a church. It is not the number of years you spend in life that matters, that count in eternity. It is the impact you made on the sand of time. It is the difference you make in your lifetime. The day you were born will not matter. The day you die will not matter. The death in between will matter. How peculiar are you? Mary, the mother of Jesus, was peculiar. There were women in, his, in her days. There were virgins in her days. But she was the chosen one. There is something in her. There is something about her that everyone's mandated that the king of glory will come to her. She fulfilled her purpose on earth. Brethren, Elisha was a man I love so much. 69 years Elisha wasted. Nothing was written about his life. 69 years nothing was written about his life because he ran his life to be productive to be to multiply to be fruitful in fact he was doing well as a businessman he was doing industrial farming but nothing matters to heaven until the mantle was placed upon his shoulder and he destroyed everything that could lick him to his past. He took the camel or the oxen, he killed them and spread them around. He said, no, I have found my purpose. I will live in purpose. I have found my peculiarity. I have discovered why I was created. And what did he do? He began the race of peculiarity. And everything he did from that time onward was written in gold. Because he honored God with everything. Paul was Saul. He lived for his greed, self until he had an encounter on the way to Damascus and when he encountered Jesus 
He said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 6, He said, Lord, what will you have me do? That means my life before now does not count. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And from that time, he became a world changer. Paul left an indelible mark that today we are still reading about how God used him. About how God used him in power and in glory to sing of his praise. When I look at the life of Elisha and I look at the life of Paul, I realize there is still hope for me. I realize it's not too late. It's not too late for me to jump from the level of the general to the level of the peculiarity. It's not too late. I'm not 69 yet. And it's not too late for you. It's not too late for you. It's not too late for you. Jeremiah Jabesh was another man like you and I what the heavens wrote about him when he was born is that Jabesh is way more honorable than his peers but Jabesh was born and because of the circumstances of his birth he began to live he allowed circumstances to dictate his aura until he came back to his senses and said, no, I cannot continue this way. If I continue this way, I will die and nobody will know me. If I continue this way, I will not sing the praise of him that has called me out of darkness to his marvelous light. If I continue this way, my memory will not be written in gold. And Jabesh ran to God. Ran to God. And because Jabesh ran to God, the Lord said to him, I will enlarge your coast. Now you will live for me. Jabesh discovered after wasted years of being general, he discovered his specific peculiarity. There are different types of vessels. There are vessels of gold, of silver, of wood, of earth. But there are vessels of honor and there are vessels of dishonor. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2 verse 20 says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold. May I tell you, in this house, this is a great house. There are vessels of gold. There are people, even if the pastor does not know them or recognize them, because they are heavyweight in the spiritual, heavens recognize them. Because they are heavyweight in the things of God, heavens recognize them. They might not be known by men, but heaven recognize when they call because of their peculiarity. Because of their life style. Because they live for God. Because they are different. But in that same house where there are vessels of gold, there are vessels of silver. And there are also of wood. And there are also of earth. But there are those who honor God in all that they do. And there are those who dishonor God in all that they do. It's not because they are pastors. It's not because they are workers. Walk with them in their places of work. You will know their, their life dishonor God. Because there is nothing in resemblance of God in their life. They are not different from the sons and daughters of Deliad that they are working with. Why? Because they are not peculiar. They are pretenders in the church. They do not have the peculiar nature of God. And it will not matter how long they stay. 
there will be no remembrance of their name. They will never leave an indelible mark in the sand of time. There are vessels of honor that it does not matter where you put them. Put them in prison. Their life will honor God. Let them be going through life challenges like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their life will honor God. Put them in prison like Joseph. Their life will honor God. It doesn't matter where they find themselves. They understood the nature of their peculiarity and the grace that they carry. They will never disappoint God. Even if they have to put their life at stake. The question is, which vessel are you? Abraham, Noah, Job, Deborah, Joseph, Daniel, all these are vessels of honor. Bro, Demas, Judas, all these are vessels of dishonor. Let's quickly look at some common characteristics of the chosen one. How do you know you are chosen? How do you know you are peculiar? How do you know? How do you know? Number one is that there is a willingness and a passion to do God's will in you. You are not satisfied if it does not bring glory to God. You are ready to put your life at stake for the name of the Lord. Somebody like David. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, David went to the camp where his brothers who were soldiers are. You know, you can call them the pastors, the bishops, the evangelists. Oh, they've been trained in the act of war, the soldiers. But David got there. A small, naive man. But there was one thing within him. David is a man that will put his life at stake just to please God. It does not matter. And he got there and he saw a Goliath threatening the soldiers of Israel. And David said, wow. You mean all of you can just sit down there and this Goliath, this unbeliever is threatening the God of heaven, the creator of the universe. What is your training all about? Why have you become, why have you been a soldier? And his brothers look at him and said, you have come again. You have come again, eh? You have come again. And David said to them, I will never forget that word. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? In your place of work, is there not a cause for you to be distinguished? Is there not a cause for you to stand out? David, like Elisha. You know the funny part of it? Before Elisha, while Elisha was still in the world, doing his things, they were sons of the prophet. The moment Elisha came on the scene, the sons of the prophet began to mock him. What good can come out of you? We were born into this. Those who have settled for the general. But Elisha said no. No. I am specific. I am peculiar. It doesn't matter how long you have been serving. Now I have encountered Jesus. Now I have discovered the reason why I have been created. And nothing will stop me. It is for this singular reason that I have been created. And nothing will stop me from fulfilling mandate. You know there are sons of the prophets all around. And even in the church of God there are sons of the prophets. They were born in a Christian home. They were raised in a Christian home. But they are anonymous. Because there is nothing about their life that honors God. Because there is nothing about their lives 
But God want to raise an Elisha here today. God want to raise a Paul out of his soul here today. Who will say, I have encountered Jesus. I have discovered why I was born. Never again will I compare myself to any. Because I am peculiar. Because I am peculiar. Willingness and passion to do the will of God. Number two, common characteristics of those who are chosen. Genuine repentance. Saul genuinely repented and everything about his life changed. After an encounter with Jesus, he was genuinely converted. There was a conviction in his heart that he will no longer go the path he was going. He's a new being. Is there a soul today who is willing to be a poor? Brethren, I need you to know that those who are chosen mostly have purity of the heart. They are pure in heart. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I was pure in heart, despite her travail. She saw the Lord, and the Lord answered her. Joseph was pure in heart, that despite her trouble, she, he saw the Lord. The presence of the Lord never departed from him. In his trial, the Lord came through for him. And there are so many in the Bible like that. How pure is your heart? How pure is your heart? Another thing is commitment and hard working. David was committed. David was hard working. And David and the Lord testified about David. He said, this is a man after my heart. In the course of this month, several pastors will be coming up by grace to, to explain more on this theme. But let's look at some barriers or impediments to working in God's special purpose. Why are you not working in God's special purpose? Some of us understood why God has called us. But we are settling for the less. One is our inability to hear God. If you cannot hear God, there is no way you will understand the purpose for which you are created because he created you. And he is the only one that knew you before you were formed. And knew the purpose for which you have been created. And to him alone you can go to discover purpose. So him alone you can go to discover purpose. So if you cannot hear God, that's a barrier. You will only hear the voice of men and you will go the path of the voice of men. You need to be able to hear God. Number two is iniquities in that one from the presence of God. Iniquity in that one from the presence of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 talks about that. Iniquity, nevertheless the foundation of God standing sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. It's not the Lord, the Lord knoweth them that are in church. So many people are in church. But I can tell you, as many as we are, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let everyone who wants to be to, to make a difference depart from iniquity. Point number three, what are those things? Comparing yourself to others. You know, we love to compare ourselves to others. When you compare yourself to others, you limit God's purpose for your life. Because your that person's purpose in life is not the same thing as yours. God may have called you purely to be an evangelist. You don't have to compare yourself who is called to be a pastor. God may have called you purely to be a prayer warrior. You don't have to compare yourself to somebody who is an evangelist. God may have called you purely to finance uh, church mi mi business or church ministry. You don't have to compare yourself to what. Work in your lane. What has God called you to do? 
Do it. And the glory of God will shine through you in that mandate. God may have called you purely to be a sanctuary keeper. Just to vacuum the floor. Just to clean. God may have called you to just arrange the bench. It does not matter in any other field that you walk. Until you arrange the bed, you will not be significant. Because that is your calling. That is your calling. So, don't compare yourself to others. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 said they that compare themselves to themselves, they are not wise. Praise the Lord. And another thing is distraction and complacency. Anyone who is distracted, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, can never walk in purpose. There is no soldier that encumbered himself with the things of this world. You will never, Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of my father and to finish it. Elisha, the moment he broke the barrier, the bridge for going back, he never went back. He focused on the assignment. Go and look at the names we are calling today and how they live their life. They were never distracted. They were never, they didn't allow for distraction. Complacency. Second Samuel chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11. We are warriors, we are soldiers. David, who is a man after God's heart, got complacent. On the day he was supposed to be leading people at the battlefield, he was sleeping at home. And because he was sleeping at home, he was so complacent that he saw what he should not see. And that led him to sin. You are a soldier for Christ. The moment you have encountered Jesus and you have decided, no, my life will count. I am not just going to be an ordinary person. My life will count. You become a soldier in the battlefield. There is no time to rest. Our rest is in heaven. There is no time to rest. Our rest is in heaven. Complacency is one of the barriers to walking in God's purpose. Doubt and fear is another major barrier. Judges chapter 6, Judges chapter 6, verses 11 to 13. Doubt and fear. Gideon was a mighty man of valor, but he was like a puppet, hiding. This is a man that was supposed to influence his world, but he was hiding. And the angel of the Lord came to him to remind him of his peculiarity. Do you know what? He queried the angel, tested the angel. Uh -uh. And that is what some of us are doing. Even when God come down to speak to you, we say, God, just, stay, just leave me in my general state. Just leave me in my general state. And if you die in that general state, you will never be eroded. But God has called you. Pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the love of the world is another thing that is an hindrance to anyone working in peculiarity. You know, pride of life. You know, Elisha could have said, I'm an industrial farmer. For me now, to now go and be saying, give your life to Jesus. Does it make any sense? But no. He destroyed everything behind. He destroyed everything behind. He dis but some of us have not even gotten there. Some of us, because you have, you have a job, and you have a house, you have a car, to work for God becomes a mountain. <laughs> to preach Christ becomes a mountain. Unfortunately. And those things doesn't stay. I thought when the Lord give me one house, I will be proud. I thought maybe when it comes to five or six. But no, it does not really matter. But because those things are ephemeral. And I am dead to them. I am dead to them. Is there anyone in the house today who is like Elisha? Who is saying, Lord, I cannot continue to live an insignificant life. You have said concerning me, I'm of a holy nation. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a chosen one. And I must show forth your light. Can you rise up? Every one of us, can we just rise up on our feet? In conclusion, until you 
discover and begin to work in God's special and specific purpose for your creation, you may not be able to change your world. Until you discover and begin to work in God's special and specific purpose for your creation, you may not be able to change your world and your life will not please God. Until you discover and begin to work. Throughout this month, we'll be talking about how to discover your purpose and so many other things. Don't miss it. I know some of us will sit down at home. It's only first Sunday that we'll see you in church. The other Sundays is online. But please, don't miss this month. Make sure you don't continue to live an inconsequential life. Make sure you discover purpose. Because everything about your life hinges on that. Is there anyone who is saying, Lord, I'm like Elisha. I'm like Saul. I want to become a Paul. I want my life to count. You just want to pray this prayer? You just want to pray this prayer? And say, Lord Jesus, Saul encounter you and his life changed. Give me the experience of a lifetime. Experience of an encounter. So that my life can change. So that I can from this moment begin to live for you and you alone. So that my life can matter in heaven. I am sorry for the wasted years. But I embrace you completely today. And I say Lord lead me. Guide me. Embrace me. Open my eyes of understanding. Speak to me about why you created me. And empower me to walk in that grace. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we round up, may I call the choir and listen. David was a king. But David sang. David praised the Lord. He humbled himself. That is one of the encounter. What makes David significant? Because he knew it was about God. Why the choir come? I want to hope that we can get a David in the house. Who will say, this 15 minutes, I will just 